listen, I've got beef, okay? So <laughs> I'm just gonna dive right into it. Allow me to read to you an excerpt from the internet, okay? <clears throat> Welcome to the circus, in all caps. A very dramatic entry. My final thoughts on the beauty world. Just let's just <laughs> preface this by saying this wasn't written by me, okay? This was written by a one Shane Dawson, okay? Now on to my final thoughts on the beauty world and my experience in it. The Conspiracy Palette was one of the best experiences of my life and bank account. The series with Jeffrey changed my life and changed me as a person. It helped me to be more confident and stand up for myself, which I've always been bad at. So to honor the series and what I learned from it, I'm gonna say this. The beauty gurus who are always involved in scandals are all the fucking same. Like your friend Jeffrey? Okay. They are all attention-seeking, game-playing, egocentric, narcissistic, vengeful, two-faced, ticking time bombs, ready to explode, and I'm over it. Just call me by name, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding he's definitely not talking about me that i know of maybe we do have beef and i i mean i have beef in his direction i'm not sure if he has beef in my direction we'll just have to find out eventually maybe now <clears throat> this is not over that was page one of four i'm so sorry that you're gonna have to sit through this for context but it's for context so yes they are talented creative smart and love makeup but they are also joined but they also jo joined a side of the internet that is obsessed with looks, money, power, fame, screenshots, and subtweets, releasing private texts, voice memos, emails, and other receipts as a way to point yourself in a particular light or someone else in a bad light is weird to me and I will never engage in that. Just like so on the cusp of self-aware, you know what I mean? Um, that is a game that they know how to play well and I would rather eat my own <laughs> hands off than play it. Yes, Jeffrey is in that list of dramatic gurus, and he would admit that, and he will always be family to me, and I love him despite those characteristics. He's very aware of the fact that I don't agree with many of the ways he approaches situations, and I've been very honest with him about needing to make some changes. But as for being in the beauty world, I can't take the drama anymore, and it's not how I'm wired, so I'm out. He didn't put a peace sign. I did that on his behalf. It's draining, exhausting, depressing, and sometimes amazing, but for me... The amazing is outweighed by the bad. I can't have a pit in my stomach every day waiting for the next scandal or the next exposed video. It's going to give me health issues and I'm done caring about it anymore. I've never been involved in drama with another YouTuber ever and the second I decided to do a beauty ser series, boom, I'm in the hurricane. So did I plan Dramageddon? Are you serious? No. Do people in the YouTube world come to me like a grandpa and tell me their problems and ask me for advice? Yes. Is it, I love the like amount of like questions. This is like how I plan my videos too. Is it easy for me to get wrapped up in something potentially toxic if I think someone I love is hurting or upset? Yes, it's an issue I need to work on and have been working on. Can I just say, <laughs> I've never been involved in drama with another YouTuber ever, and the second I decided to do a beauty ser series, boom, I'm in the hurricane. Let's just be clear. <laughs> You didn't do a beauty series. You highlighted the literal one person that has continually been the most toxic, harmful, racist, misogynistic, threatening individual in the community. So I don't know. It could have something to do with that. Oh, I think he's talking about Tati. Okay, okay. When she told me how upset she was in person, I had the same reaction the world did when they saw her video. I felt awful for her and she seemed broken. So I tried to be there for her and be someone she could talk to about it. So was I shocked that she decided to make a video? No. Was I shocked that Tati read his asked for fucking filth yes i wasn't acting i didn't know it was going to be that intense looking back i still believe her a lot on a lot of what she said and i believe she felt it was what she needed to do at the time does she regret it probably does it mean we should see james as some poor innocent sweet angel no don't get it twisted him and jeffrey have always been at the top of the dramatic guru list and i mean that with love did i warn james about the video no why for reasons that i will never discuss <laughs> We've spoken privately on it, and that's that. Do I think James is the devil? No. Can you imagine if he was like, I, I do, <laughs> frankly, yes. Do I think he was a young, egocentric, power-hungry guru, guru who needed to be served a slice of humble pie the size of the fucking Empire State Building? Yes. I was gonna do my makeup <laughs> while doing this video, but I'm just like so agitated that I don't think that will be happening today. Here's the thing. Why the fuck do you get to decide who needs to be served a slice of humble pie, Shane? Just out of curiosity. I just I just would like to know. Here's what I always took issue with when the whole thing with Tati and James went down. James is without a doubt a flawed individual. One could argue that we all are, okay? I never agreed with Tati calling out James' mom, calling out some of the things that she did publicly in that video because James 
he's young, but he's an adult. If somebody ever addressed my mother on a YouTube video, I would be fucking irate. Here's why. It has nothing to do with anybody's parents. That was so uncalled for and so like just, I just was not about it, okay? And I don't have issues with Tati directly. Let me just put that out in the, in the clear, okay? My issue with that video overall is that much of what she was bringing up is stuff that she was clearly fine with while they were friends. But when James wronged her in her eyes, then suddenly that behavior was all not okay. And also worth mentioning, a lot of the behavior that she talked down about being so disgusted by and stuff like that is behavior that is um, self-admitted in, in Jeffrey. So that to me was a huge conflict. And this just to me goes to show the amount of hypocrisy taking place within um, that whole drama get in um, with how Shane looks at Jeffrey versus the entire rest of the beauty community. Moving on here. Has he grown as a person since then? It really seems like it and that's amazing. I'm truly, <laughs> I can't say this in a way that's not shitty. Uh, I'm truly happy if he's realized his ego was affecting others, which he did address in his No More Lies video. Do I think Tati is a villain? No, I think Tati was sick of being treated like shit by so many in the beauty world and finally snapped. And damn, she fucking snap all the way off. Holy shit, she really said fuck it and beat her face for the gods and popped on that ring light and went full Game of Thrones on that shit. Does she use a ring light? I can't really see her being like a ring light type of bitch. Like I picture like a soft light situation. Anyways, say what you want about her video, but that shit will be in the history books. Fucking YouTube Rewind even gave it an acknowledgement. Damn. Okay, sorry, back to my rant. Do I think Jeffrey orchestrated, orchestrated the whole situation? No. Tati is a strong woman who made a choice. Do I think Jeffrey was also upset by some of the issues with James and some things he heard behind the scenes? Yes. Was Jeffrey excited to see a competitor fall? Probably. He's Jeffrey fucking star. What do you expect? I guess I missed the part where he got baptized and devoted his life to Christ. Again, we all make mistakes. We all have made mistakes, will continue to make mistakes. I take issue with someone excusing someone's behavior just because that's who they are. Not to mention the fact that you're doing it alongside painting a, an industry as a whole as being shitty for the same reasons. Did Jeffrey take it too far and fuck up big time by tweeting what he did? Yes, and it's one of the biggest regrets of his life. This all happened over a year ago and I'm really sick of hearing about it and having people constantly using it as a way to keep my name and other names tagged in, together in drama videos. Don't get it twisted, drama will never end with a lot of these people. It's their game, their survival, their drug. They love it. This specific drama went too far, obviously, and hopefully something like that never happens again. Putting drama in the trailer was something I regret more than anything in the world and I'm mad that I chose Tea over my morals. Shane, Shane, I know you aren't gonna watch this video, but if you were, this is what I would say to you. Shane, are you, are you fucking kidding? Are you serious? <laughs> do you, do you, I mean, just like, just, you know, person to person here. Are you kidding me? Do you really believe that your videos are not drama centric? You, you, what? <laughs> Your videos are absolutely meant to highlight drama. They are absolutely meant to highlight some. I mean, you did a series with what's that guy's name? J uh, uh, Jake, or was it the other one? His name Jake Paul. Shane. You did a series with Jake Paul. Are you kidding me? You did a series with Tana Mojo. Like these are people that are highly controversial at the best of times. And um, if you seriously believe that you are absolved. <laughs> of like any sin in the realm of like using drama for views, then give me a fucking break, dude. I'm really sorry to Tati and James if me putting their drama in the series at all felt like I was reopening up wounds. Although I did speak to the, both of them privately about the trailer, I should not have even done it at all. Drama might be fun to watch, but it's not fun to get wrapped up in. And it's my fault for letting that happen. And I'm sick of being trapped in the middle of it. Do I think this will be the last drama involving these people? Ha ha ha, no. No, I don't. Do I want to be involved ever again? Fuck no. Remember to not expect these gurus to maintain some high moral code. And we shouldn't have some they must be perfect or they're canceled mentality. The reason you watch these people is because they are so extra. My knees are sweating, man. Uh, the reason you watch these people is because they are so extra. They're dramatic. And if you keep canceling them and wanting them to go away, then, then who will you talk about? You don't go to a circus to watch the hay on the ground. You go to watch the over-the-top performers who just want to be liked and want to do and want to do whatever they can to get your attention. If you don't feed into it, they don't. But before all the drama-free gurus pop off at me and say, well, I'm not involved in drama and I'm perfect, 
who says that? Nobody. Girl, please. <laughs> Your top viewed videos are probably top makeup fails and anti-hauls with vomit emojis all over the screen. And that's okay. I love those videos. Fucking exactly. You and everybody else. <laughs> I'll hold, okay? But let's not pretend that the beauty world, beauty world isn't negativity first, makeup second. It's just how it is and I'm sick of people pretending to be so above it all. And with that said, I love watching beauty channels of all sizes and will continue to watch and support them. The dramatic ones, the non-dramatic ones, and the ones who genuinely just love to show their makeup skills. Sadly, those channels get way less views for the reasons I've stated above. So go, enjoy the gurus, <laughs> spread your wings, <laughs> enjoy the circus, unsubscribe from me if you're mad that I'm no longer engaging in it, unsubscribe to gurus who you don't like, subscribe to gurus you do like. Just general good advice. Uh, just don't take the beauty world as seriously as I did or as so many of us did in 2019. It's not worth it and I feel like we all lost a bit of our soul during Dramageddon. And then he goes on to say that he's not going to be part of it basically. Here's the thing, you took the beauty world so seriously in 2019 because you were profiting off of it. Let me start by saying, I for one am not above it, okay? <laughs> the idea that you are not drama free if some of your top videos are like top makeup fails anti health stuff like that is such bullshit to me in so many ways you're doing your job first of all part of your job is to review products and talk about products that you like talk about products that you don't like what you do like what you don't like etc to hopefully help people to uh make a decision as to what they're going to be spending their money on so do I think those videos are negativity first and makeup second? No, I personally don't because I'm biased and because I just think that is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard, <laughs> okay? Let me tell you why. If you went into a store, okay, you went into Subway and you were talking to the associate and you were like, hey man, how about that meatball sub? And they were like, ooh, low key, the meatball sub, moldy, not really good. Would you be like, wow, you're fucking negative and I don't need this in my life? No, you'd be like, wow, thank you for that. Sh cold cut maybe instead it's just the way of the world man some things are not good some things deserve criticism your statement here for instance is what i believe to be one of those things personally and i just think this is so rich so rich from somebody that has become exorbitantly wealthy off highlighting people that are generally seen as negative or controversial or dramatic the thing is shane's doing basically exactly what everybody else is doing on youtube but he does it in a way that's so manipulative that he somehow flies under the radar and everyone is just like seemingly oblivious to it highlighting the most drama centric people on youtube but painting it as like you are this savior of their souls you're just trying to lift them up and showcase what a good person they are like it makes it seem like you have no hand in the issues that you're above it all that you're just playing like neutral switzerland kind of thing and that's not the case <laughs> and i can't i can't speak to the jeffrey um docuseries in particular because i never ended up watching it because i don't support jeffrey star but in some of the other docuseries of his that i watched um something that always grinded my gears was him saying you guys Today, we got a sponsor. We. I, I'm not sure if my check got lost in the mail or what, because like, I don't remember, I don't remember getting the sponsorship cut. You got a sponsor, dude. You got a sponsor. He frequently um, makes mention of, or if you want to call it this, jokes about him being poor. But to me, it just all comes across as so manipulative because you're trying to make something seem like something that it's not. You are highly, highly wealthy. You've done very well for yourself. It's no secret. <laughs> and to be honest, I mean, a lot of people find that to be charming. Personally, I prefer the way that Jeffrey goes about being fabulously wealthy because he's not trying to fucking hide anything. He's like, listen, bitch, I got fucking oodles and caboodles of cash. Obviously you do. Uh, you're wearing a Versace robe and you're get ready with me in a private jet. Of course you are fucking wealthy. And same goes for Shane Dawson. You're buying cars for people. You live in fucking Calabasas in a mansion. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> okay? You're gonna have to accept at some point that you are above the poverty line by just a, just a touch. But this to me is the equivalent of being like, I'm so real, I'm so like blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with any of this. I don't, whatever. You don't agree with it. You can't claim to not agree with something and feel like that is justified just because you've said so while continuing to highlight the issue as well as contribute to it. 
You can't leave a community you were never part of. That was very clear from the beginning, at least to me. This was not a person who was genuinely interested in being part of the beauty community. This was a person who entered the community with a very clear vision. If you don't think that that palette was planned from the jump, okay? If you don't think that that palette was planned from the jump, for those of you guys that haven't watched the thing, this is my understanding. Shane did the docu-series with Jeffree Star, and I believe at the like very end or maybe one of the last episodes, they um, announced that they were launching a palette together. That palette would have been in production for months. So the intention was, let's just be frank, to get into the industry, make it seem as if he had some kind of hand in it, launch his palette, make money from the docuseries along the way, and then the second that he announced his relaunch of the palette, the next day, he was like, bye. <laughs> I'm done here. Okay, thanks so much. You weren't part of this community. You were part of the cash flow. So he leaves after having made his money while making a blanket statement about the community. Those criticisms and those blanket statements are the same issue that I have with when Marlena of Makeup Geek posted her video talking about influencers. Jesus Christ, that was probably two years ago now. If you guys don't know about that video, basically Marlena, she is the owner of Makeup Geek um, and she's been on YouTube forever. And she made a video talking about influencers saying that um, you know she wishes that it would go back to being about the love about makeup and that um, she doesn't agree with influencers charging $60,000 for a video. So this resulted in people just going fucking wild. Everyone was behind Marlena on it um, and a lot of people were talking down to um, the community at large basically being like, you guys are all scumbags, all you care about is the money, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, this is somebody that's running a business that has been on Forbes list before. This is not a mom and pop operation anymore. This is somebody who's, you know, made a really significant amount of money off of their, the industry. And when you make a blanket statement like, hey, influencers charge this much for a video and I don't think that's cool, it results in people feeling like that's they have all the info now. Because the internet is so emotionally driven, few people stop to think critically and be like, hold on a second, probably not everybody is making $60,000 a video. They just blanket statement that across the board to everybody. You're all making $60,000 and you're all a piece of shit for it, okay? <laughs> so the aftermath of that video upset me and a lot of people were upset with me because I spoke out against Marlena when that video came out. But I've always taken issue with this. I've always taken issue with people generalizing a community um, and making it seem like something that it's not. When there's the vast majority of people that are, first of all, not making $60,000 a year, let alone a video. Secondly, they're not dramatic and negativity first and makeup second, et cetera, et cetera. And so in the same vein as Marlena's comment, when Shane comes into the industry, and records an expose about this top, top 1%, this one person basically, um, and a few other people that are at the very, very, very top of the pyramid. It paints the industry at large to be something very different from what it actually is. And Shane's commentary about it just lends to my belief that he didn't really spend any time highlighting the actual beauty community at all, which solidifies even further my belief that he only came into this community for the profit. Something else <laughs> while we're here, okay, that really bothers me is that um, a lot of people see the beauty community as being um, female dominated. And while the population is female dominated, if you look at most of the top earners, a lot of them are male, cisgendered, white or white passing. If you look at most CEOs of beauty companies, most of them are male, cisgendered, white or white passing. So in saying that, this industry is very much status quo with every other industry in the world that is dominated by white men. And because this is seen as purely female dominated, uh, men in the industry are seen as an underdog and they're able to get away with even more than they normally get away with just being that they are men. So when people make these blanket statements, usually the people that are most affected negatively by it are women. And if you look at somebody like Shane Dawson, if you look at somebody like Jeffree Star, believe what you wanna believe about these people, you might support them, you might really enjoy their content, whatever, you might think they're good people at the end of the day. I really suggest that you question whether or not you would be okay with the things that they say, with the things that they do, with the things that they have done in the past, if you would be okay with those exact same things if they happen with a female influencer. And I just, if you're being honest with yourself, I highly doubt that the answer is that yes, you would be okay with it. Manny MUA on Instagram has a quote, and he's had this quote as far, as long as I've known him, for years and years and years, he's had this quote in his Instagram. 
bio. And it says, I think boys deserve just as much cosmetic recognition. Again, I have no issue with Manny personally. I think he's actually quite lovely. But I take issue with that statement because if anything, from what I've seen, and let me just say, I recognize that there's not enough visibility or representation when it comes to men within the beauty community, uh, along with BIPOC, of course, and um, the trans community as well. But ultimately, I think that in general, men do receive a lot of cosmetic recognition. And if anything, um, you know, a lot of women that are twice as talented, twice as charismatic, etc., will never reach the same height as somebody like Jeffree Star or Manny or Shane or whomever else. And this is just, you know, reflective of, again, all of the other industries in our world, basically. Women consistently, historically, work twice as hard to get half as far, to make half as much, if that. <laughs> we so highly value men's contributions in comparison to women's. And so same goes for somebody that is in a position of power like Shane. People value your opinion. Shane, who's still not watching my video at this given time, <laughs> people value your opinion. And because of that, the rest of us, you traipse away with your millions of dollars and the rest of us are left to deal with the fallout of your statement. And I think that as much as it's a hard pill to swallow, somebody who is a platform as fucking gigantic as Shane, you do have responsibility in that. The same way that I do or anybody else does in this community, if you have any amount of platform, if you have anybody following you, you do have responsibility. And part of that responsibility to me is being conscious with your words. So understanding the fact that you've just undermined a community as a whole, I think that's a real fucking shame. That's a real shame that that's what you're choosing to do with your platform. I just, I have a really hard time with this thinly veiled superiority complex from somebody who is doing the exact same thing as what they're criticizing. So let me just say this in defense of my community, okay? This community is filled with some of the most unbelievably hardworking, talented individuals I've literally ever met in my entire life. These are people who are such self-starters, who are so inventive, who are so willing to be resourceful rather than complain about their lack of resources. The vast majority of the beauty community from what I've seen are people that are willing to learn, they're willing to be corrected, they're wanting to make changes, they're wanting to be better people, and ultimately they want to spread happiness and comfort and laughter. And I think for all of these people to be portrayed as anything less than that is just heinous, in my opinion. I want you guys to link all the people that you love the most in this industry in the comment section so that we can all check them out. We can all praise them for being awesome and great and fantastic and non-dramatic. And if they are dramatic, who gives a fuck? Because that's just people, okay? And Shane Dawson, how fucking disappointing, truly. And uh, that's it. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.